Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at question 64 to 67 of the third section of the Green Book. This is a question about the blood clotting cascade, and it's quite a complicated diagram if you've not seen it before. Um, but we'll go through it um, when we're covering the question. So 64 says, which one of the following is a precursor for factor 5? So let me highlight factor 5 here so we can see where it is. So factor 5 here. Um, a says active protein C could be a precursor. Well, active protein C is um, inhibiting it, and we can tell this by the, the little negative sign in the circle above the arrow leading to it. Um, it's an inhibiting factor five, so it's not a precursor of it. What about factor 10A? Well, factor 10A works with factor five um, to convert prothrombin to thrombin. So it's not going to be a precursor for it, it just works with it. And then thrombin, is it a precursor for it? Well, it's a product of a reaction that factor five has a, has a role in facilitating, so it's not gonna be a precursor of it either. So the answer for this is going to be D, none of the above. 65 says, which one of the following is most likely the role of factor eight? I'll highlight it here for clarity. Um, a says it enhances the activity of factor 9A. Um, B says it helps in the conversion of factor 9A to factor 10A. Well, it 9A doesn't get converted into 10A. 9A works with factor 8 to convert 10 to 10A. It's not that one factor can turn into another. It can only turn from uh, its normal state into its active state, and that's what the little a means. It's not that it could then turn into factor 11 or something. Um, instead, these factors are all completely different. So factor it enhances the activity of factor 9a. The answer here is going to be a. But again, just to continue ruling out the other answers, uh, c says it is a cofactor for the conversion of factor 9 into factor 10. Well, of course, factor 9 isn't converted into factor 10. So that's not going to be true. And then D says it provides positive feedback for factor 10 to factor 10A reaction. So it does facilitate um, this reaction or does enhance the activity of factor 9A, but it doesn't provide any positive feedback. There's no indication of that in the diagram. Uh, so the answer for this is going to definitely be A. 66 then is from when the wound surface contact begins, which one of the following is likely to first occur after the longest period of time? So I was a bit confused when I first read this question because it said first occur and then longest period of time. Um, but it says over the, the span of the healing of this wound, what is the first major thing to occur over the longest period of time? So if we look at A, it says the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin clot. Well, that is the ultimate goal of this um, whole cascade, as we can see. This at the very bottom is what everything is trying to achieve. Um, B says the effect of negative feedback. Well, negative feedback prevents an overreaction and for too much of this fibrinogen to be converted into fibrin. Um, it's a really important thing to stop this overreaction and for extra scar tissue to be produced when it's not necessary. Um, so this is gonna be the first thing to occur because it prevents this overreaction. But we'll rule out the others um, just write down B first. So the, to rule out C, it says the effect of positive feedback. Well, positive feedback is important um, in this case because it allows for the complete reaction to take place. So thrombin then can um, go on and help factor 10A produce or um, factor 10A um, convert prothrombin to thrombin. And so we get this little cycle here, which is really useful. Um, for more thrombin formation, and that's an example of positive feedback, um, but it's not going to happen uh, in the long term. And then D says the activation of protein C, so it's part of the negative feedback loop, but its activation is only um, after thrombin has been produced, and so in the long term. We're going to be looking more generally about the negative feedback loop that has been happening here, so the answer here is definitely going to be B. And then 67 says in biological regulatory mechanisms, positive feedback is what? Okay, so A says, is a more useful mechanism than negative feedback? Um, that's not true because positive feedback um, and negative feedback working together in tandem correctly is the best 
um, for regulating any mechanism. B says, usually occurs in absence of negative feedback. Very rarely does this happen. There's only a couple of examples I can think of, for example, like childbirth, where you want something to only go in one direction. Um, this isn't an example of that. You wouldn't want fibrin clots to be produced endlessly. Um, so positive feedback usually occurs when there is um, negative feedback. So B isn't true. C says is unlikely to occur in the absence of negative feedback. So it's really the opposite of B. Uh, and so I'd say this is the right answer. But to rule out D, we'd say is likely to occur in all the same pathways as negative feedback. And sometimes it is there, but sometimes it's not. And a lot of homeostatic mechanisms don't have much in the way of positive feedback. So the answer here is definitely going to be C. So that was question 64 to 67. Uh, I hope that helped.